Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Thank you for joining me for another video. I'd like to thank all my recent subscribers, and if you're new to the channel and you enjoy my content, please like, leave a comment, and remember to subscribe. Today, we have a very exciting video. I'm gonna show you how to get the best sound out of your gaming PC. We're gonna talk about headphones, headsets, as well as sound cards and USB DACs. So stay tuned and let's see what's gonna happen. First, let's talk about the wired gaming headsets. Now, it's always a little bit controversial. What's better for sound, gaming headsets or real headphones? They both have their uses, and I'm gonna show you why coming up. So first, we're gonna talk about the Sennheiser GSP 600. Now, these do look a little bit gamery, but they are made by Sennheiser, which is a renowned brand for audiophile headphones, including the HD 650, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later. These, in my opinion, look pretty cool. It's not over the top, but they sound fantastic. The build quality is very, very high, and you can plug these into whatever, and they're gonna sound pretty, pretty good right off the bat. Of course, you'd wanna pair something like this up with possibly a sound card, or even Sennheiser's own GSX-1000. Um, if you're an FPS player, that's gonna give you really crispy sound. Not too much bass, but it's gonna allow you to hear footsteps and things of that nature. Um, so to go back to this headphone, it has a built-in headset, so you can just get this and you're good to go. Um, it's a little bit expensive. It's not exactly a cheap budget headphone. You can probably find it somewhere under 200, like between 150 to 200 dollars. But it is very good quality and it's something you could have for a very long time. So this should definitely be on your shopping list if you're looking around this range and you want a gaming headset. Sennheiser is a much more serious brand. They've been around audio for a long time. So you're gonna get a very, very good product. Music-wise, they're okay for listening to music. They're really tuned for gaming, so I wouldn't recommend them if you're heavy, heavy into music. But if you do a balance of gaming with a bit of music, I think they're going to do just fine. So let's keep going, and we're going to take a look at this next wired headset. The next wired gaming headset we're going to talk about is the Logitech G Pro X. Now, I'm, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you guys, this is my favorite gaming headset. It sounds fantastic. The build quality is amazing. Everything feels very solid, rigidly built. It's not really over the top. It's very understated. It's not like their other gamer headsets where it's all kind of plastic. It kind of looks like a transformer. This one looks very understated, very sleek. The materials feel top notch. The headrest is extremely comfortable and it sounds really, really good. It comes in with a a little built-in USB DAC so you don't have to worry about a sound card or worry about if your motherboard is going to be able to power it. You plug it in, open the Logitech G Hub software, which is my favorite software. I generally don't like these type of softwares too much because they're a little bit intrusive, but the Logitech one is well done. You can sort of leave it off if you don't want to use it. Um, it does come with a mic. It's the Blue Mic. It's tuned by the same company that makes like the Blue Yeti mic and, and things of that nature. So it's really, really nice. This headset by far is my favorite. I do prefer it over the Sennheiser. I just feel like it's a little bit more tuned for gaming. For music, it sounds okay. But for gaming, and I've tried all of them, this is something you can get and sort of just forget about it, not have to get another headset for a long time. It's that good. I really, really recommend this one over almost any other wired gaming headset. Now let's talk about wireless gaming headsets. These are an interesting category because it starts to get a little bit different than regular headphones because most he regular headphones that are audiophile aren't going to be wireless. So these kind of straddle that middle ground. The first one we're going to talk about is the HyperX Cloud. And HyperX is a very popular brand amongst eSport players. 
These wireless ones don't sound as good as their wired versions, but in general, they do sound pretty good. The sound is nice when you're playing games. For music, they're okay as well. Um, once again, if you're looking for music, you better get a real headphone. I think that's gonna be your best bet. But the thing I love about these, they're very light, and they're very easy to just plug in your USB dongle and be on your way. The battery life is fantastic. I think they rate it for almost like 30 hours. You can definitely play a long time without having to charge. I really enjoy these for a wireless headset. If you just want something easy to use, I would definitely recommend these. Next up on the wireless list, we're gonna talk about the Razer Nari Ultimate. These have a little secret within them, which is kind of a gimmick. It's haptic feedback in the ear pads. So anytime you hear like an explosion or any type of heavy bass, like in maybe hip hop music, you're gonna get this haptic feedback right on your ears. It's gonna be a vibrating feeling. Now it's kind of cool, like if you're playing Battlefield 5 and there's a tank coming and shooting at you, it is pretty cool. You get to hear the explosions and feel them. Um, it also, of course, comes in with a built-in mic. Sound quality wise, it does sound pretty good, but it is almost $200. So I'm not sure if I can really recommend this one. If you wanna try the little gimmicky future of the haptic feedback, be my guest, that's why I got it. You know, I wanted to try it. In general, I would only get this if you're a big Razer fan. The final wireless headset on our list is gonna be my favorite one by far. This is the Steel Series Arctic Pro. The first thing that I love about these, it's the battery usage and battery life. What I mean by that is that your gaming, if the battery runs out, it has this little USB OLED display input unit that charges batteries. You can just pop a battery out. It comes with two batteries, by the way. You pop a battery out, magnetically remove the ear cup, pop the battery in, put the other one to charge, and you're on your way. This is a really cool way to do it. You don't have to connect a cable to it. You don't have to stop gaming or switch headphones. You could just make sure one battery is always charged up. You could really use these for regular music as well. They do have HD audio. They actually sound fantastic for music. So they're one of the most well-rounded headphones. What's the problem? The kicker is the price. These originally were well over $300, and even on sale now, they're still very high. Um, is it worth it? Yes and no. Because of the price, it is a little bit of a sting. The features are amazing. The battery swapping is really, really cool. The little old display is cool. Um, the sound quality is awesome. The comfort, it's small. Um, it almost looks like a regular headphone if you there's no gamer uh, logos on it or any crazy lights. But it is very expensive, so I hesitate to recommend it completely because of that. You can get a wired version of this, which is considerably cheaper. Um, I don't feel like I'm compromising much when I'm using these, so I would definitely recommend it to somebody that has it in their budget. Now we come to the headphone section. Very controversial anytime somebody asks gaming headset or gaming headphone, what would you recommend? Of course, a lot of times we do like to have that little gamer branding RGB. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of times you just have to be careful and make sure you're not overpaying for poor sound quality just to get something that's a brand or something that's gonna look cool. These wired and wireless gaming headsets that I mentioned previously all have a pretty respectable level of performance that Yes, you know, they do have some RGB and maybe some gimmicks, but now headphones, let's start with a couple. The first one is the Audio-Technica AD700X. These have a very specific purpose. They're very, very open sound stage. You can have a closed back headphone, which sort of blocks out external sound, or a very open headphone, where you're gonna have a very open sound stage, and you're also gonna be able to hear everything that's going on around you in your house, or if you're at a LAN party, you're gonna hear everybody talking. A closed headphone, you hear considerably less, so just keep that in mind as we go through these. Now, these AD700X headphones sound really, really good for one thing, FPS gaming. You could really hear enemies and footsteps. It has a huge sound stage. It doesn't have that much bass. For music, they're good but the same caveat applies no bass at all so if you're listening to something light like maybe jazz or classical i think they'll do but if anything has bass these aren't going to do too well but aside from that these have a very clear sound and they're not overly expensive i think you should be able to get them for around 100 bucks or depending on the sale you know in that neighborhood 
Um, so I do recommend these if you're a competitive like FPS gamer, you know, Quake Champions, Overwatch, Counter-Strike, things of that nature. You really do hear a lot. The Mass Drop AKG K7XX is an amazing headphone. Now this headphone, in my opinion, has one of the best price to performance ratios that you can get. It's around 200 bucks, but I believe I got it on sale on Mass Drop for under 200. The sound is fantastic. It's almost as good as the Sennheisers that we're gonna talk about next. Um, it sounds really, really good for music and for gaming, it's amazing. It's, it's an open headset. And of course, you can hear a lot of stuff around you, but it also gives you a really nice sound stage. It's not the widest sound stage you can get, so I would definitely recommend these as a headphone. These are one of my top picks for sound quality. You can also get the Sennheiser HD 650, or to save some money at around 199, you can get the Mass Drop version, which is the HD 6XX. These sound pretty much the same as its more expensive brother, just the build quality and a couple things are a little bit different, so you could definitely get these. I can recommend these wholeheartedly. They sound amazing for music. They're well-renowned as one of the best audiophile type headphones for the price. So these I can recommend if you're doing music. If you're playing gaming, they're fantastic as well. They don't have the biggest sound stage for gaming. So if you're a competitive like FPS gamer or something like that, I would steer you in the direction of maybe the AKG we talked about previously, or even more extreme, the AD700X by Audio-Technica, which has a huge open sound stage. In terms of sound cards, I've tried various ones. The EVGA NU Audio sound card is the one that I'm currently using. Um, it's a very straightforward sound card. It's just meant to make everything sound crystal clear and sharp. Games sound fantastic. Music sounds really good. It has a very powerful amp. Um, it doesn't add too many, you know, virtual surround effects. It does have that option for you to do that in the software, but it's not really geared towards that like a Sound Blaster card would be. So in general, this is a very, very good sound card. It's EVGA's first sound card, and they did a great job. They partnered with a well-known company. Um, you can use these for gaming, for music. Originally, they were around $250, and now they're kind of on sale for under $200 here and there, you know, on Amazon. So I can definitely recommend these. The other sound cards that I would use the Sound Blaster AE5, 7, and 9. Depending on your budget, they're excellent as well. A very portable DAC that you can plug into your phone to listen to music, plug into a laptop to game with better audio, or even your desktop is this Dragonfly unit. It sounds fantastic. You can get this little jitterbug. Um, it's also USB. That helps to take out any sort of noise and interference if it's as expensive as one of the sound cards. But the plus is that it's very portable. You can pop it out of a USB, bring it to a laptop, bring it to a LAN party. Um, it's not particularly focused towards gaming. It's more of like a music solution, but it also sounds pretty good with gaming just because it's going to be able to drive a nice headphone and it's also going to give you a really clear sound. Um, so I would recommend these if you're on the go a lot and you just want something to put in your pocket. How about motherboard audio? Can you get good sound from a motherboard? Believe it or not, most modern motherboards do sound pretty good. Um, sometimes if you're really, really picky, you can hear a little bit of audio interference, but m most of the really newer motherboards, you'll be okay. They may not be able to drive some of the high performance headphones as well as a sound card or a USB DAC, but a lot of them are very competent. And the really high end motherboards like the X570 MSI Godlike, or even the X299 Rampage 6, they have very robust um, solutions for audio. Um, that a lot of times they'll have like a separate headphone amp or something like that. So if you get something like that, you're definitely good. You probably don't really need a sound card. Even though I know that's me, the type of people that get those expensive motherboards, you're gonna want a sound card anyway because you wanna see how to get the best sound even if the other ones are already amazing. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Once again, I want to thank all my subscribers. If you enjoyed the video, please like, leave a comment. I'd love to hear what type of sound setup you're running on your PC. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so, and I'll catch you on the next video.